My name is James Graves, and welcome to another edition of Night Journey Rewind. I got a good one for you. Well, I always have a good one for you, but let me give you a little background on who we're about to talk to. Jason Morin, who's a pianist, says it's like finding Duke Ellington who meets Ornette Coleman. Interesting. That's real interesting. Mark Whitfield, a guitarist, says one of the most sought after bassists on the scene today. His latest project, Iconoclash, follows up from his 2015 CD, Basic Truth. Now, this guy has played with John Patisse, Nicholas Payton, Freddie Cole, Russell Gunn, Seal, my good friend, late pianist Henry Butler. He also won an award for the ASCAP Foundation for the Louis Armstrong Award in 2011 and the Ernest O. Shirley N. Sweetson Jazz Composition in 2012. What well, are y'all? Who am I talking about? Basses, Barry Stevenson. Welcome to the show, brother. Thank you for having to take the time. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, man. Thank you for having me. Okay, we got to go down memory lane, brother. Now, I <laughs> I don't want to give up too much, but I heard, I was reading and saw that you really was sought out to want to be, you know, a rock and roll bassist. But let's oh, let's go man. back a little bit further than that. How'd you get started playing the bass in the first place? Um, well, for me, it was, um, I wanted to actually play in a rock band in, in eighth grade. And in ninth grade, I, I had a scheduling conflict where they put me in this wrong class and I wanted to be in guitar class but they wouldn't let me be in the guitar class because it would mess up with like my scheduling for like my my magnet classes which i was going to magnet school at the time for marine science of all things and um <laughs> and so they were like well you can be in the jazz band for second period so i was like all right cool i what this did was this like kind of opened my ears to like other styles of music too at the time like reggae and ska and funk and like blues and, and you know with, stuff with horns and all that and um so I'm playing electric bass and a friend of mine played upright bass in the, you know, in the jazz band as well. And he kind of showed me some things, but it wasn't really until my senior year when I decided I wanted to go to Florida State University that I, and I knew I had to like audition on upright. So I took some lessons in um, January of 2005 and then had my audition in March of 2005. I got to ask and you, then, well, okay, not to cut you off. I got to ask you one quick question. Was that a hard transition from, playing electric bass to upright um it, it was definitely different a lot more um you know you're focusing on positions and obviously like there's no fret so like intonation is, is a you know key factor in playing the bass it's, it's, it's a completely different instrument and it requires like i never had lessons on electric or before actually thinking of auditioning for you know fsu mm -hmm. so like um I had to, you know, play catch up in a way, you know. So taking lessons in general was like a, a different thing for me. And then studying the music and the history of the music and learning tunes, learning how to walk, you know, play walking bass lines. I saw like that was all like 2005. The reason why I say that, uh, it's been a long time coming. I've always loved the bass. When I was in high school, I played the baritone saxophone. Nice. And uh, so I've always wanted to play bass, but, you know, things go on. I'm doing a whole different thing right now. But since I've kind of retired and I have a little bit more time on my hands right now, actually, I'm learning how to play the bass, starting off with oh, the nice. electric bass, you know. So nice. I'm pretty jazzed about that, bro. I just wanted to throw that in. <laughs> Nice, so, nice. But you started playing jazz. What was it about that kind of says, hmm, you know, I, I kind of like this. It was, it was really like the freedom to express yourself in like the moment and to take the music somewhere. Like if you have like the right cast and characters on stage with you and everybody's together under one kind of uh, goal. Right. It, it kind of, it, it became like a, it's a feeling that you can't describe. And it's like something you don't get really any you get it in other styles of music yet but just how like far on the edge you can take it in like you know a jazz context is like very special so that kind of like that appealed to me in a certain way you know
My name is James Graves. This is Night Journey Rewind, and we are visiting with bassist Barry Stevenson. High school, went to college, playing it. When did you decide during this time that, you know what, I would like to try this professionally? Uh, it was high school. When I decided I was going to go to FSU, I said, you know what, um, am I going to study science or am I going to study, like, I was going to want to be a marine biologist. I was like, am I going to do that or do I want to? put my time towards music and I was like I'm a terrible student so if I, if I I'm not gonna major in both like I was like that's not that's not real like let me like I'm not doing that uh -huh. so I was like which one do I want to devote my life to and it, and it was music so you know I went um studied with great bassist Rodney Jordan and um from that point I was like this is what I'm doing like I'm putting my time into playing the bass and playing this music and the life that associates with that, you know? Recognition, one thing, but while going through this uh, period of really just devoting yourself and learning how to play bass, we had talked earlier, and I was saying, listening to your, you know, to your latest project, I heard a little Charlie Hayden in there. <laughs> there's so many, there's so many great basses out there, man, you know, just not just electric, but I'm just talking about upright basses. And there's just yeah. so many people that you could probably pick from and say, ooh, I like that lick from Ron Carter. Oh, but man, I'm feeling Charlie Mingus on this one. Oh, you know, and, and the list goes on. How do you know there's so many out there? How do you kind of be able, first of all, to be able to develop your own style, but you know, there's just so many cats that you can take something from to develop with. Yeah, I mean, well, one thing uh, my teacher Rodney Jordan always told me was the best artists are also the best thieves. And he was saying, if you look at any of your favorite artists, they stole something from someone before them and took it and made it their own. So, like, it's a, it's about understanding the history and knowing the music, like, like to where it's a part of you, but also being free in who you are and bringing yourself to the table. Like, taking all, like, okay, I like this from Mingus. I like this from, you know, PC. I like this from Ron. I like this from Ray Brown. I like this from Jimmy Garrison. You know, like, taking all these different things Charlie Hayden, you know, and then just kind of distilling them into like, you know, this is wh how I would do it. Mm -hmm. I learned, like you learn what's possible from the masters, I feel like. Like they show you like, this is possible. Now take it and run with it. I heard that. It makes a lot of sense because like I said, there's just so many great cats out there and you could probably oh, yeah. get something Man. from every one of them, you know. You can, you really can. <laughs> Bottom line, you want to kind of develop your own sound. So when people listen to your music they said oh yeah that's barry right there i <laughs> and have do you think you've got that yet or is that something you're still working on to answer that question like 
there's two sides of it, right? Like you're always working on it. You're always working on your sound, refining it and fine tuning it, so to speak. But then like, I remember one time, um, so I, I went to the University of New Orleans for grad school after FSU and, you know, Wes Anderson, the great warm daddy, he, he was living in Baton Rouge and he would come down there all the time. His son was going to school with me, uh, Wes Anderson, the, the fourth. And he said to a friend of mine who asked him one day about develop, he's an outdoor player. And my friend asked him about developing, developing his sound. And Wes said, man, you already have your sound. You're born with your sound. The way you, you, you move air through the horn, your lungs, like all the things, the way it stuff, the little things that you do, how you do it is like based on your physicality, like, you know, how you control things and everything. Mm-hmm. Like you're born with that sound. You already have your sound. It's really recognizing that sound and like the, the good parts that you like, the parts you don't like and fine tuning everything. Right. And getting comfortable with it. Because, I mean, you already have your sound. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you're not, yeah. You think about it when you listen to yourself it, through the years. It's the same sound. But it's just you hear like, okay, like you're, you're, you're fine-tuning, you're tweaking this, you're doing this, you're trying to go for a different thing, like, you know, different periods of the journey. But, like, it's just a journey. The, the overall thing is you want to sound good. <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I heard that. That is the bottom line.
My name is James yeah, Graves. This is Night Journey Rewind, and we're visiting with bassist Barry Stevenson. All right, Barry, you're developing your sound, your first professional gig. Ooh, um, <laughs> tick-tock, tick-tock. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't tell you my first professional gig, honestly, but uh, I remember my first professional tour was with uh, this blues band based in Tallahassee, Florida. I went to Southern Isles, and that's when I was like, oh, snap touring like you know getting paid to travel in the world like i was like this is possible so i just kind of wanted to get more of that happening you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. let's talk about your cd the concept how did you come up with it? very interesting cover thanks thanks this uh gentleman patrick dower who i crazy enough like found in the search section of instagram right mm -hmm. um I, I saw some work he did and I clicked through and I was like, man, I contacted him and we collaborated on the uh, artwork. He created this original piece. And um, oh, okay. then a friend of mine, uh, Michelle Ray Williams, she did the album layout. Oh, okay. And so, um, yeah, but uh, the concept of the record was born out of the idea of doing a record where it was just, not beholden to the same like traditional standpoint of recording like a jazz record in terms of like, okay, we're going to like create these like airtight arrangements and we're going to like rehearse them to death and then we're going to record. I brought in cats. I brought in a, I brought in tunes that were easy, not, not easy, but vehicles of um, improvisation that you could jump on them right away. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I, I enlisted the help of, um, Jameson Ross on drums, Patrick Bartley on alto saxophone, and Ricardo Pascal on um, tenor saxophone, who are people I knew could actually get to my concept and my vision right away, which is half the battle. Um, <laughs> but I wanted it to have these almost like cinematic gestures of a story, you know, like where each tune takes you through like kind of like a different mode and a different mood that's kind of really the feelings of just like when you just really get around like black people in their environment you know what i mean like yes. for instance like the song jelly is like just like a party you know what i mean like it's just like i went to school in tallahassee so like there were fam u parties or fsu parties it's like okay party one of the top 10 party schools mm -hmm. in the country or whatever so it's like yeah jelly you did um and just different like even in breezy it's supposed to like kind of be like reminiscent of um I'm from Florida originally, South Florida. And it's like, you know, during the summer, like Labor Day weekend, on Memorial Day, you have like a, you know, cookout on the beach, with your friends, your family, you know, you listen to music. It's always somebody playing like Frankie, I mean, May Street featuring Frankie Beverly. Like, it's right. just, you know, that, that kind of energy. Right, right. But since it's Florida, it, it always rains at the beach for, for like 15 minutes, you know, and then it's back. <laughs> so like there's a part in the song where it's like that rain where it might start storming and then all of a sudden it's back to normal.
Assumptions is like about, you know, I, this Assumptions is a, the title on the record, but I always introduce it. Uh, like when we played, I said, Assumptions can get you killed, you know? Because that's <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth, you know? Yeah, People yeah. say something about you, and it's like, next thing you know, we're reading about it on, in the paper, listen to it on, you know, the news or whatever. It's just the, that kind of just right. saying, like, we're not a monolith, you know? Like, there's just so many aspects of, to us that, um, you know, just even in the makeup of the band, like, like I just got such different characters. Like, if you knew them personally, like, Jameson, like, you know, he's a, you know, Grammy-nominated drummer, vocalist, and he, he drums with a snarky puppy. And he's, you know, when you see him in the airport, he's wearing, like, a fitted, probably some Jordans and, like, some sweats and a hoodie. People are always like, are you guys, like, you know, like a rap group? You know, that kind of stuff. If you knew this dude played straight ahead, <laughs> and it tips like it's like they don't they don't understand how to place it and if you hear his voice it's just like angelic so it's like they don't know what to do with that kind of information you know what i mean right. same thing with like patrick bartley and ricardo these are like two people who are like super into like computers and like you know i knew bringing them together like they told me it was a if anything it was monumental in that it's the first time that patrick and ricardo had ever recorded together really ever played together and I knew them together would be a vibe. Like I knew I was like, they're going to be able to do my concept. So I came into it with these tunes. Like I said, some, I came into it with like the song Quirk is a Condom. It was like just a sketch of two different lines. And um, producer Nicholas Payton was like, I want to hear this melody the whole time. You want to have the solo. So we kind of went, we approached it from that kind of angle, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I, I allowed basically for their space to be space for the compositions to take shape while we were recording. Like we would, rehearse the tune and then record a tune and that's the, the process we followed you know oh okay yeah like so we like some of the stuff like i was changing it on the spot like let's do this it was a it was a, a way of like really really getting some ideas and like letting the other musicians have a say in like the process as opposed to just being like here i brought these tunes um and let's know. go over it and this is how it's gonna <laughs> sound Let's, yeah, let's Hopefully. play this. Then, then it's like let's play this, and then you play four bars here solo, trade eights, and then you know drum vamp, and then play the head out. No, we didn't do that. <laughs> Thank you. 
My name is James Graves. This is Night Journey Rewind. And we're visiting with bassist Barry Stevenson. Everybody wants to put, and I'll throw my hand up too, wants to put on music, classify the music. Miles says it's not jazz, it's just music. And a lot of other musicians have said the same thing. So I really work hard to try to just, just say this, this is great music. But then when you talk to some folks, and I won't really get into it, it's like, oh, they just don't really understand. Now, would you consider your music uh, more of a freestyle, from like jazz, freedom music? I would, I would consider my music to be like, so as like you were saying, Miles Davis said, it's, it ain't jazz no more, it's social music. A band leader I worked with, uh, John Baptiste, he called his music social music which is like, you know, it's feeding off of like the sounds that are in the air, you know, of society and of the time. And so it's like rapidly evolving. But the producer of the record is Nicholas Payton has dubbed his music Black American music, which is all encompassing and just the diaspora at, at its finest. Like it's all of the slave trade through the Americas up to like, this point and then the popular music that became of it you know like it's all of that and it's how we express ourselves it's like all wrapped up in our sound and it's really coming from the same thing and it's i, I mean for me i i would say my music there's moments of freedom in it there's moments where it's just straight ahead and we just swing you know mm -hmm. there's moments of groove there's moments of it's more of just music, you know? <laughs> you well, know? you know, I, I hear you, man. It, As it's, Duke Ellington said, it's either good or it's, there's only two kinds of music, good and bad. <laughs> there you go. Or as Miles says, your next note will define what that last note is, if it's a good note or a bad note, you know? Yep, exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. But, you uh, know, I would, if somebody asked me, I'd just tell them, like, yeah, it's jazz. It's straight ahead jazz. It's modern jazz, sure. Okay. Whatever you need. Contemporary yeah. jazz, you know. Someone told me I always cater to the person who's asking. <laughs> 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 All right. Touche. I hear you on that one. I hear you on that one. What was your reasoning uh, that you didn't want to use a pianist? Um, so at the time I was listening to, or through the, you know, the years, I recorded the record actually in 2018, but because you know, I'm financing all, I'm, you know, financing all of this out of pocket as an independent artist. Um, these things sometimes take a little longer to get out. Right. But um, I decided that the sound I was hearing after listening to a lot of uh, Sonny Rollins, Our Man in Paris, and Mingus's, uh, Charles Mingus presents Charles Mingus, um, just those cordless quartet records trained with uh, Eric, with uh, Ornette's rhythm section. You, you check that one out? That's yes. I, mm -hmm. I, I love that record. Like just stuff like that, Branford's Trio GP. You know, just different records that are, uh, you know, didn't have that chordal instrument, but you weren't missing it. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. And I, and I, I figured if I was going to get this concept I was going for, um, not having it, having it there would kind of actually open up the possibilities of what could happen. You know what I mean? Yes. Well, you know, it's interesting that you said Bradford Marcellus because when I was listening to your project and listening to a couple of songs, I cannot remember the songs that they were. I said, boy. You know, that sounds like, you know, Bradford, when Bradford's on that soprano and it's just like mm -hmm. everybody's kind of like in their own beat, but they're at the beat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, we're, yeah, we're so working together. Yeah. You know, so there was a song on there that made me think of Bradford when I was listening to it. Oh, wow. It's a great project, bro. It's a great project. I appreciate you, you man. Know? I appreciate you checking it out, for real. Oh, yeah, man. I, I'm going to always check it out before I sit down and talk to you. I ain't going to try to come in here to <laughs> sounding real stupid. <laughs> hey, man. At least I try you know, not to. Do, yeah, some people don't do their job, but I appreciate you being a cat who does, you know? <laughs> well, I love this music, man, and I'm yes, starting indeed. to kind of understand it. And uh, mm. um, because I've been doing, I've been playing jazz, you know, as a jazz uh, air personality for years. And I never grew up in a jazz background. So everything I learned is by reading, you know, reading the back of the vinyls at that time and then just start listening mm -hmm. and then start talking to the other cats. And when I had the opportunity to start meeting a lot of these cats like Billy Higgins, uh, Henry wow. Butler, Clifford Jordan, you know, Cedar Walton. And I mean, yeah, you know, man. they would sit down and we would just have conversations. Harold Land, all these cats, man. Wow. Then we're going to talk about bassists like Al McKibben, The Skipper. Yeah. Red Calendar, Larry Gales. You know, yes, so I love Larry Gales. People don't talk about Larry Gales. Man, I love Larry Gales. 
I have that's the secret weapon. So you bring and you brought up Clifford Jordan, so I know you're hip to Wilbur Ware. That's like oh yeah, that's oh Sunny yeah. Rollins. Oh like, yeah, Sunny Rollins, Sunday Night at Village Vanguard, mm-hmm. huge inspiration for the record. Uh, Wilbur Ware's Super Bass Quartet. You ever that that posthumous recording they made of him with uh, Clifford Jordan and uh, Ed Blackwell, and I want to say it was Don Cherry, because like that's that's what I it makes sense. Right. But um, yeah, man, it's whew, those <laughs> records, right? There. I mean, that kind of set me up. I was like, I want to be able to live in that zone, you know, and do it with my interpretation of it. You know? Right, right, and, exactly. You know, and play play the music how I see it, you know. Right. But um, you mentioned you mentioned Henry Butler, and you said you had had some acquaintance with him, man. Um, oh yeah, I met I met Henry. Like, like I said, I used to live in New Orleans, and he came. He would come through for jazz fest, and an artist um, I was working with, manager, put me on, you know, these gigs. And it turned into like we went to Brazil and playing in front of thousands of people at this like in Sao Paulo, like crazy block party, like just sea of people. But Henry Butler playing some blues, and, you know, he's a legend. He's God rest his soul. Um, Henry is a pillar of New Orleans piano, so um, to be able to play with him was such an you know he taught me a lot. Yeah. He's very particular about what he wanted. He could go from playing Pinocchio to playing. Mardi Gras in New Orleans and it could be in one failed swoop and you got to be there. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh. And he heard, and yeah. he heard everything. Every little note. you, Every little thing you did, he heard it. Right. He was an incredible musician and he was an incredible oh. brother, man. Um, yes, indeed. Uh, I ha- I Hilarious. Ha- yeah, I had the opportunity to meet him in Los Angeles when he used to come to Los Angeles. And uh, yeah. we wound up really becoming, you know, good friends. Actually, during that time when I was trying to do a little jazz promoting, and had it got hooked up at this hotel up on Sunset Boulevard. We fe- we had him for two nights up there, and wow. he and he worked with us really well. Just a good brother. Yeah, man. Yeah, and, of course. And and I think the interview that I did with him, man, I think I did about two interviews with him. So even that was just precious. Well, brother, let me tell you, congratulations on this project, Iconoclast. Right, thank you. Thank and you. Uh, thank for you people so much. who people who want to get it, why don't you give them some information on how they can contact you or how they can contact to get the music. Yeah, well, um, if you go to Bandcamp and type in Barry Stevenson, that's B-A-R-R-Y-S-T-E-P-H-E-N-S-O-N, um, you'll be able to check out both actual, both my releases are there. You can also check it out. It's on you know, Apple Music, iTunes. But Bandcamp is actually like the best way to support the artist, especially in today's you know, day and time, because they actually um, pay the artist. You know, the money goes directly to me. So Bandcamp is where I would suggest you get it from okay but if you like car copies you know it's gonna be that that's the best way and i'm also on instagram as uh pocket b i'm on twitter various pocket facebook you like that right we're all social now so you can find me anywhere where people are found <laughs> <laughs> there you go well brother i i enjoyed our conversation and, and it was an p- absolute pleasure thank you and continued success to you man and let's stay in touch yes indeed man i, I i'm really glad you enjoy the record and you heard all the things I was trying to get across in there, man. You know, and I, man, it means a lot to me that you were talking to me about the record, and I appreciate you. All right, man. My name is James Graves. This is Night Journey Rewind, and we were visiting, having a great conversation with bassist Barry Stevenson. Once again, brother, thank you so much for your time. Continued success to you. Thank you. Have a good one. All right.